Let's uh, get right into this. This is a new example, an OSC to MIDI control project where you can uh, you can convert incoming OSC messages to MIDI. And what we'll do is we'll get our device list, the MIDI devices that are available on this uh, this PC, and we select that device so that we can send MIDI uh, MIDI message messages. And I'm going to use a, a Maple MIDI port that's a virtual port. And I'm using a MIDI OX as a, a MIDI monitor. Next, uh, I will select a, uh, a CC command from the list. And we'll just select the first uh, command, which is bank select. And then when we have uh, OSC me messages come in that we want to store in our, our display field, uh, we can store those. Uh, let's go ahead and start the OSC server on port uh, 5000 and we do that by pressing the listen button and then we can send some uh, OSC commands. What we're using is uh, Bajul. We're just uh, using the a four channel mixer and I'm going to uh, I'm going to configure a mute OSC command. As you can see the uh, the messages come in real time and you can see uh, what that's what that OSC message is that you're that you will go that you're going to store. Uh, but we'll select the uh, the mute message mute message uh, just for an example here. So what what you do is you press the store button once you find the message that you want, and um, uh, in the message field at the bottom, it shows you that the message was stored. So now when we have that that message come in, it will actually trigger a MIDI message. So we have tied that OSC message to that CC command. And as you can see in the MIDI monitor, we are triggering uh, that uh, bank select message with a zero and one value. That is that is what a, uh, a mute command message will send from, uh, from this mixer. It's just status on or off, zero or one. So that is an, that is an integer message. A slider will send a floating point message, which does not really translate to a MIDI message, but we're going to round that value to a uh, to just a regular integer value. So we can use that for modulation, and that's what we've done. We've stored it, and the incoming slider will now control the uh, modulation. So as we store those values, the incoming uh, uh, listen, the OSC server will just parse all of that information and translate that to MIDI messages. And that's that's exactly how this works. So the, the message that we're storing actually has uh, uh, integer and floating point information that is separate. We You can press each item in the list and you can see what is stored. And as you can see, we're not storing the value. That's calculated in real time on the fly. The, the message that is stored is uh, the IP address and the, uh, the identification uh, names, which is the, the control names, and the type of message. The way that this script works is in the listen button, we have the, uh, the loop. And I'll show you what that script looks like here. What we're doing is we're parsing the incoming uh, OSC buffer. And the OSC buffer contains a preformatted string that parses the raw uh, UDP string that comes in from, from any OSC capable device. We're, we're using uh, Bejewel and that is sending its bundle type of formatted packet message. And what we do with that is uh, just in a for loop, it's parsing through all of the CC uh, that, that list, all of the stored information in this list, and when it finds a match according to the information that we stored here, it sends a, an event, a trigger, a do release to button test. So button test is this button right here and we can press this button at any time 
to test whether MIDI communication and information is happening. And ac uh, according to information that you set here in the channel and value and what is selected here in the list, that's how this message will be assembled. So we've, I've selected all notes off and when I press test and I have a, a MIDI device selected or at least some name in the device field, that is uh, what will be sent out and assembled for the MIDI message. Well, now that you have your program done, there are a couple things you can do. You can uh, start up the project in a windowed mode, and then the only thing you see, you don't see the editor or anything else. All you see is a window, and I gave you a simple button for doing that. But you can also uh, resize that window. So if you're if you're done editing, you can make the window any size you want to and this is how it will start up and once if you want to go into the edit mode you just uh, press your window button or you can have that button hidden if you want to and then you can go in and edit also the uh, the listen if you want to start the listen mode you can uh, I have in the open script of the of the main page I have a, a one line that will allow you to uh, to start up the script so that when you open the project it will automatically send a push to the uh, to the button make sure you save that too and it will start it will start your loop but you won't even see that the window will be or whatever size you want you could just you could have it that small if you want to and uh, you can copy these objects to other projects to your own project and you can edit this any way you want to you when you save a project you save it exactly in the state that you see so if you save it with the listen button enabled it will actually save in that state uh, what you should do is turn that off, and I do have a clear fields button here uh, that will clear. There we go. But you can, uh, once you have your device name, you can actually just leave that field and clear everything else. So you can copy that and paste it back in. You can you can verify what strings are are stored by just selecting your lines and it will show you what information. But you can also see in the in the object editor in the info tab what CC values are stored in the custom properties to uh, for verification. <laughs>